run score and Chronotrack Live have been integrated. We'll show you how you can download entrants from the Chronotrack Live, download new entrants, upload entrants, upload new entrants, both from a listing file and from the Enter Edit screen. Before we do anything else, we have to save our login and our password. To do that, we go to Tools, Chronotrack Live, Save Login Password. It's important to realize that we're not really logging onto the system. We're just saving the login and the password on the local PC. To download registrations, we first have to pick an event. To do that, we go to Tools, Contract Live, Select Event. We'll pick the API test. Shows the one event that we've selected and the event is made up of two separate races, a 5K and a 10K, and the race IDs are there, 1740 and 1741. Before doing a download, let's talk about field names. The field names in Run Score and the field names in Contract Live will not be the same. When you do your first download, you'll be given a chance to map the fields from one to the other. Notice over on the right, there's two field names that are probably not familiar to you. The external ID and the entry ID. The external ID is something that identifies the person to you, to your race. It could be a U.S. triathlon number, it could be a USATF number, something that you identify. If you don't have such a number, you can equate it to the bib number as we've done here. The entry ID is a unique number for this person for this race. It is assigned for this person for the race and never used again. Let's do a download. Go first to Tools, Contract Live, Download Registrations. You see we can do a full download or an incremental download. We also can pick which races we want to download, the 10K, the 5K, or both. We'll pick both and we'll do a full download since this is the initial download for this event. Since we haven't mapped the field yet, as soon as we do a download, we're given the opportunity to map the contract live fields to the run score fields. The first one is entry external ID. That's what we've called external ID. We left the entry off. The entry name is the first and last name put together. We don't care about that, so we ignore it. The entry type we ignore, status ignore, bib. That's one we want. We pick that into our NO field. Race age, that's the age. Social messaging, we don't care about that. SMS, we don't care. Location. Race ID. Race name, that's what we're calling race. Right there. The event ID, we're not doing anything with that. The athlete ID, first name, there's one we care about. First name, last name, sex, birth date, t-shirt. Now we don't care about the ones after this, so down at the bottom we click on ignore all remaining fields. The download starts, the download ends, and we're done. Let's see what we have. There we have the three names that we have downloaded. We'll pop up one of them. And there is the new entry. That mapping we just did created a new file called ctlivefieldsmapping.ini. It maps the contract live fields, for example, entry external ID to our field external ID, etc. Race age to age. And down here is the race name. That's our field we call race and first name, last name, birthday. Now it's important to understand that this is used in an upload, but in reverse. That is, run score looks at the run score fields like age and first name, looks over to see what the field name is for contract live and does that conversion on the upload. Let's take a look at that field race. Over in the I and I file, we equated the run score race to the contract field race name. This is a very important one because when you're doing upload, this is required. It will not allow you to upload a new entrant unless a race is designated for that person. 
Another field that is required in an upload is the external ID. This must be filled in or the upload of a new entrant will not be accepted. If you want to see the details of the race you've selected, you don't have to go back and select it again. You can go back to Tools, Project Live, and Event Details. And this shows the same information as when you first select an event. Now, let's go up to the contract live site for this particular race. Here are the three entrants we have. They happen to be our three children, Kendra Klein, Medell. Two of them entered in the 5K and one in the 10K. On the contact live site, we'll add a new athlete. I'll click on Add Athlete, and I'll put myself in. And I'll enter the 10K race. Click Mail, Date of Birth. Complete and Save. Go back to Athletes, and the new entry is there. Let's do another download to bring down any new registrations. Tools, Contract Live, Download Registrations, but this time we'll do an incremental download. You notice one 10K came down. I've shown you how to download registrations and new registrations, but you might ask, what about if I add new registrations on RunScore? How do I get them up to the Contract Live website? We'll show you. Here's a new entry, bib number 10, Barbara Jones. We upload them with a listing file called CT Live Upload. There's an export line to output this to a file. We have to say what system we're uploading it to. Upload to CT Live. Then we're going to just upload that one bib number 10, but in a real case, you probably have a whole range of bib numbers. The fields that you need are the entry ID, even though there's nothing in it yet the external ID, and then the different fields that you want. And the one that's very important, as mentioned before, is you must have the race field, so it knows which race to put this entrant into. Let's do the upload. You double click on the CT Live Upload listing, selecting records of print, and it says done CT Live Upload. We now know that the new registrations are up at the website. Let's go back to that new registrations. Bib number 10, pop it up, and we see something new. The entry ID, which was blank before, has now been filled in. That was done by Contract Live. It sent down the information run score, and run score put it in that field. So that is a unique entry for that person for this particular race. Now we'll go back to the Contract Live website, and we see that the new entrant, Barbara Jones, with the chrono ID of 32378488, is now added to the database. I've shown you how to download registrations and upload registrations, but it gets better. There's a way to synchronize the two databases so that changes made at Contract Live will be reflected in RunScore, and changes in RunScore will be reflected in Contract Live. You do this by going to Tools, Contract Live, and Sync with Server. Let's go back and show that again. Sync with Server is now checked. Recall that we added Alan Jones to the Contract Live database, but we never gave him a bib number. So it has over here the bib number is not assigned. In Run Score, we'll give Alan Jones the bib number of six. We'll hit F4 to update, and there's a little bit of a pause, and then after the pause, we know that it has now been changed online. We'll go back and take a look. We see that Alan Jones does have the bid number six assigned in the same way that a change made in run score ended up on Contract Live. We could have gone to the Contract Live website, made a change, and it would be reflected down in run score. One difference is run score only goes up and checks four changes once a minute. So you might not see the change right away, but it will show up. 